The hells we have lived through and live through still have sharpened our senses and toughened our will. Celebrated poet and activist Maya Angelou may have been speaking about herself on that day in 1995. Born Marguerite Annie Johnson in St. Louis, Missouri, April 4, 1928, the hells she lived through began at the age of seven when she was raped by her mother's boyfriend. After she spoke out against him, he was beaten to death by a mob. Young Marguerite blamed herself. I was seven and a half, and my seven and a half year old logic deduced that my voice had killed him. So I stopped speaking for almost six years. And it was during those years of silence that she discovered poetry and her love of art. And somehow I'm able to get down inside myself, deep where a poem may live and find out what it has to say. Her poetry was first physical, winning a dance and drama scholarship in San Francisco, then later touring Europe in 1954 in Porgy and Bess. But her growing love for the written word took her to Egypt and Ghana, where she became a newspaper editor. In Ghana, she met Malcolm X and returned to the U.S. in 1964 to join his fight in the civil rights movement. After Malcolm X's assassination, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. asked her to join him. He was killed on her birthday, 1968. The following year, her first memoir was published, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. More bestsellers would follow. I want to write so well that a person has 30 or 40 pages in a book of mine before she realizes she's reading. Her books detailed personal struggles, like having a baby as an unwed teenager. That son later became novelist Guy Johnson. Cut. Blazing trails on the big and small screens, she directed documentaries. Her screenplay for 1972's Georgia, Georgia was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize. And in 1977, she appeared in the landmark TV adaptation of Alex Haley's Roots. And grow as tall as a tree, and I will still be your grandmother. Maya Angelou was nominated for a Tony Award. She won three Grammys, and in 2011, President Barack Obama presented her with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Former President Bill Clinton awarded her the Presidential Medal of Arts in 2000. Years earlier, at his request, she had written a poem for his inauguration. Here, on the puff of this new day, you may have the grace to look up and out and into your sister's eyes. She called herself Maya, which was her brother's nickname for her. Angelo came from her first husband's name, Tosh Angelos. It is a long journey. It's a sweet one, bittersweet, and very blessed. She had created her own name just as she had created poetry from pieces of herself. Leaving behind nights of terror, and fear, I rise, into a daybreak miraculously clear, I rise, bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the hope and the dream of the slave. And so, naturally, there I go rising. Oh. I am grateful to be, have been loved and to be loved now and to be able to love because that liberates. Love liberates. It doesn't just hold. That's ego. Love liberates. When, uh, when my son was born, I was 17. My mother had a huge house, 14-room house. At 17, I went to her and said, I'm leaving. She asked me, you're leaving my house? And she had live-in help. I said, yes, I've found a job, and I've got a room with cooking privileges down the hall, and the landlady will be the babysitter. She asked me, you're leaving my house? I said, yes, ma'am, and you're taking the baby? I said, yes. She said, all right, remember this. When you step over my door sill, you've been raised. You know the difference between right and wrong. 
do right. Don't let anybody raise you and make you change. And remember this, you can always come home. I went home every time life slammed me down and made me call it uncle. I went home with my baby. My mother never once acted as I told you so. She said, oh, baby's home. Oh, my darling, mommy's going to cook you something. Mother's going to make this for you. Love. She liberated me to life. She continued to do that. When uh, my son may have been five years old, my mother uh, would pick him up all the time and feed him. And I went to her once a month, and she would cook for me. So one day I went to her house, and she'd cooked red rice, which I loved. After we finished eating, we walked down the hill, and she started to cross the street. She said, wait a minute, baby. I was 22 years old. She said, wait a minute, baby. You know, I think you're the greatest woman I've ever met. She said, Mary McLeod Bethune, Eleanor Roosevelt, and my mother, you're in that category. Then she said, give me a kiss. I gave her a kiss, and I got onto the streetcar. I can remember the way the sun fell on the slats of the wooden seats. I sat there, and I thought about her. I thought, suppose she's right. She's intelligent. And she's, she says she's too mean to lie. So suppose I am going to be somebody. She released me. She freed me to say I may have something in me that would be of value. Maybe not just to me. You see? That's love. And when she was in her final sickness, I went out to San Francisco. And the doctor said she had three, three weeks to live. I asked her, would you come to North Carolina? She said, yes. She had emphysema and lung cancer. I brought her to my home. She lived for a year and a half. And when she was finally, finally, in extremis, she was on oxygen and finding cancer for her life. And I remembered her liberating me. And I said, I hope I'll be able to liberate her. She deserved that from me. She deserved a great daughter, and she got one. So in her last days, I said, now, I understand that some people need permission to go. As I understand it, you may have done what God put you here to do. You were a great worker. You must have been a great uh, lover, because a lot of men, and if I'm not wrong, maybe a couple of women, risked their lives to love you. You were a piss-poor mother of small children, but you were a great, great mother of young adults. And if you need permission to go, I liberate you. I went back to my house, and something said, go back. I was in my pajamas. I jumped in my car and ran, and the nurse said, she's just gone. You see, love liberates. It doesn't bind. Love says, I love you. I love you if you're in China. I love you if you're cross town. I love you if you're in Harlem. I love you. I would like to be near you. I'd like to have your arms around me. I'd like to hear your voice in my ear. But that's not possible now. So I love you. Go.